Welcome back, everybody. Uh, the student that was studying these tests realized that it looks like on every exam, there will be a question on nuclear magnetic resonance solvents. And she was wondering where I got these from. We did a study of solvents in section 9.1b. Remember there were three categories of solvents, polar protic, nonpolar, and polar aprotic. So what you wanna do is go back to section 9.1b, replace in every one of those solvents, every single hydrogen you see with a deuterium, and now you have NMR solvents. And the categories match. Replacing H with deuterium does not change the polarity of the molecule. So what we have here is deuteromethanol, which is polar protic, and deuteroacetic acid. I should say per deutero, which means every, every H has been replaced by a deuterium. Do not pick this solvent. This is deuteromethanol with three H's. That means the only peak you would see if you use this as an NMR solvent would be the peak for the solvent. You wouldn't see any other molecule in there because solvent concentrations dwarf the other molecules concentrations. Same story here. AC group is a CH3 attached to a carbonyl. You do not want to see those H's. So down here, uh, we want to use nonpolar solvents. So, hey, in the notes on section 9.1D, hexane was given. Um, carbon tetrachloride, I don't think was given, but I think you know carbon tetrachloride is nonpolar. Even though it has some polarity in each bond, the polarity cancels in a tetrahedron, right? And no H's to worry about there. Deuterochloroform is a nonpolar solvent. Okay, I think we're hearing something about HFC's webpage right now. All right. Uh, per deuteromethanol is a, a, a polar solvent, so don't pick it for a nonpolar solvent. Benzene is a nonpolar solvent. Hexafluorobenzene has no H's, so that would be good. Uh, per deuterodimethylformamide would be D carbonyl. And once again, you got to go to section 9.1b, CD3, CD3, uh, dimethyl is now dideuteromethyl. And that's polar covalent. Uh, pol uh, what did we call it? Polar aprotic. Don't pick it. So just remember those three categories when you review 9.1d. I'm going to pick one of the categories for your test and ask you which solvents fit in that category. And that's it. I promise it's going to happen. And down here, she had a straightforward question. Um, she was reading my comment about vicinal hydrogens that are identical twins are not neighbors. So they're always, they always show up as singlets to each other. And she understood that to mean uh, this here, that these would both be in the same category. And because they're twins, the CH2 here is no different than the CH2 here. Uh, they behave like one thing. So there would be a big peak with a integration of four. It would be a singlet because identical twins don't have neighbors. And she picked the right delta from the chart because it would be in the ether category. Even though she knows that's an acetal, the H's don't know that. They think it's an ether. So everything she said here was correct. And I think that was it for that one. Let's move on to this one. All right, so another one of these. Yeah, you, don't, you can't pick and choose which of the four reactions. You gotta do them all. And I just had a summary to get us to product one so that we can go to product three. So steps one and two here and here, given organolithium. Steps three and four, give this product one. And thionyl chloride will replace OH with Cl and magnesium and diethyl ether 
after step two. Oh, I said two and wrote three. Interesting. One, two is going to give this. Should have done an R group, but so CH2, CH2 comes down to a C that has a lithium now, lithium in hexane. One, two, three, four. So we're here after steps one and two. And where are we going to? We made product one. Uh, thionyl chloride, okay, pentene oxide. Uh, we're going to open up an epoxide. And then I'll just do step three here. And we're basically going to copy everything up to here. R. R has made a new bond to the least hindered carbon of one pentene oxide, which looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. So we have a new bond to that. And it goes, so we're attacking the least hindered carbon over here. And that'll be a CH2. It'll go to a C with an O minus. We're just doing step three. We haven't added any protons. And that has a propyl off of it. One, two, three, four, five. Verify you attacked a five carbon unit from the least hindered carbon. One, two, three, four, five. You have an O minus. When you add chromium six oxide and aqueous sulfuric acid, you're used to seeing those conditions where a primary or a secondary alcohol reacts, I want to remind you, uh, sulfuric acid has protons, which will first protonate this to give you the alcohol you wanted. And then you're gonna oxidize it to a ketone. So product three is a ketone. So we'll go here, step four, product three is a ketone. and probably add organolithiums to that or something in subsequent reactions. But she didn't want to ask about those. And there we go. And then moving on, similar story. We're not going to ignore anything. Not allowed to, oops, let's just cross those off. Once again, Thionyl chloride and pyridine from 3-phenyl-1-propanol. 3-phenyl-1-propanol. Phenyl-3-2-1 alcohol. 1 and 2. 1 makes a chloro instead of an OH, and 2 converts it to a Grignard. And three and four, propanol reacts in three. And four is HCl. So Grignards and organolithiums love attacking carbonyls. New bond here should be red. And it's attached to propanol's carbon, which is now an OH. After step three, it was an O minus. Step four makes it OH, and there's product one. And it's one, two, three, four. And then all of the steps to go to product two. Okay, no ignoring. Must do all steps every time. All right, so we're moving up to product two. It seems like I do the same things over and over again. Why? Because it's very common. Steps one and two. Step one, convert to a, a organic bromide. Alcohols become a carbon attached to BR with PBR3. And then organolithium in step two. And we have phenyl. Surprise me to, oh, there's a mistake in my own scheme. I can't do what I want to do. I'm really sad. 
that alcohol would have reacted instead in an acid base reaction. No, I apologize. The alcohol has gone. I said it was going to be gone. I said it was converted to an organic bromide and then I put OH and then my mind lost itself. And then we make a lithium there. No apology necessary here. That is going to attack one butene oxide. It seems to me I keep asking the same kind of stuff over and over. Why? Because it's important. One butene oxide is three and four. Acetic acid again, some proton source. I'll put it in purple so you know where it ends up. And this is the attacker. Product two is going to be here as a phenyl. CH2, CH2, CC. Uh, some kind of new bond from there. And then the black piece here. And the new bond here to the butene oxide. Also in black. Ooh, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Too many. And purple H. Why purple H? Because it came from acetic acid. This acetic acid protonated this, probably asked for a PKEQ that semester as well. Once again, going towards 17 from 5, same answer as on our previous first screen, I believe. So, yeah, that's product two. Got to do all the steps. And that, too, is a good segment right there. And we'll be coming back for more. A little preview action. Yeah, a little roadmap from the last semester, the one that will look more like your roadmap. So that'll be fall 20 coming up soon.